Could it possibly be true? Yes, it is. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's here just around the corner. And I'm here to make it more creative and even more inspired with some whimsical ideas. There's everything that we could possibly do together. And who am I? It's me, Indiana Jones. Let's get started. I thought I would bring some inspiring and creative ideas for cottage core Christmas. Yes, cottage core is the big word. And it is a big word, but it is a big thing this year. Instead of farmhouse, it's cottage core. What's the difference? Well, it's still kind of country-ish, but with some more color. It's not just basic black and white. So here I'm taking a sweater that I found at the store. I think I got the sweater for $3. It's a beautiful sweater, however, it had a couple of tears here and there. So I am going to take advantage and make some homemade stockings out of this sweater sleeve. And I just love the color. It's a, a very muted kind of foresty green, and that is so cottage core. So here what I'm doing is I made a, a model of my my sock I guess or my stocking sorry and what I'm doing is I'm putting some of this uh, vellum not vellum I'm sorry it's um yes stick I can't remember what the name of it is it's horrible but it's like interfacing that's what it is interfacing so that when I cut the sweater it doesn't fall apart that's the most important part of this whole thing so all I'm doing is ironing the interfacing to the sweater before I cut it so it doesn't unravel as I am cutting the pieces of this stocking. Now all I'm doing is cutting along the interfacing. As I said before, it helps to keep the sweater from unraveling and it also provides a stable base for your stocking because it's such a soft fabric. It is a very soft, it's not a fabric, but a soft knit. If you didn't put any um, interfacing it would probably get all wonky and stuff once you put the uh, gifts inside. So the interfacing does have a dual purpose. And interfacing is very inexpensive. And you, as you saw, it's very easy to apply to any kind of fabric. And there you have it. There's my boot. Now, I am going to criticize myself. I made it too round at the bottom. So it looks, it's not like a boot. It looks like a stocking, like a sock. And it's very rounded at the bottom, but I still think it's cute. It's very country-ish and, of course, very cottage core. So here I am sewing the bottom of the uh, stocking and the side, the one side, because one side was already sewn together because it was a, well, it was a sleeve. So the top part of the stocking is already sewn. So all I'm doing is the bottom part of the stocking and I'm sewing it very slowly and carefully to make sure that I don't miss and I would, I sewed it twice. You don't have to, you can decide. And there you go, there's the bottom of our stocking. Now, I'm ironing it again, once again, just to, you know, give it that shape. And as you can see, the bottom of it is kind of roundish, but it's cute, I like it, I think it's cute. And I love, love, love this color, as I mentioned before. Now, the embellishment. I had this beautiful faux fur ribbon from last year. I actually got it in one of those Michaels grab boxes and I have at least six I don't know six rolls of it and I thought it looks so cottage core put together with this um, sweater I just love it look at that cable knit it's so pretty so that's all I'm going to do is to embellish the cuff instead of making a cuff from the sweater making it out of this faux fur and I think it, the contrast is just perfect and once again I am just sewing it together to the top now, I didn't put any um, interfacing at the top of the stocking. And, I, you know, in retrospect, I should have. I think it would have been easier. But just because the faux fur is so, it's such a strong um, ribbon that, um, I, as I would mention, I sewed it twice so that there was no problem, even though it didn't have any interfacing. I did sew the cuff twice so that it would be nice and sturdy. And there is our beautiful little sweater cottage core stocking for Christmas. This is a wonderful cottage core collaboration 
that I was invited to by Jackie of Crafting in Mimi's World, and I'm also joined by Sarah of Jujube DIY. Please check out both of their channels and both of their wonderful cottage core Christmas ideas. Now to keep with this color scheme and this theme of using this sweater, I'm going to use the bottom of the sweater and make a very long like neck roll kind of pillow. And um, here I am just sewing the front of the sweater. It didn't have any buttons, which I'm kind of glad because you don't want to have buttons on your pillows like where you're going to lay down and that this would be the front of the pillow. So all I did was I sewed the front of the, the two flaps of the front of the sweater together so that it would be one continuous um i guess pillow now the you can make it into a pillowcase and just keep that open so that you can just put pillows in and out but i just filled it with the polyfill as you can see polyfill i think it's called polyfill um and it took one bag of this polyfill again i lucked out because somebody gave this bag to me because i am a hoarder and i do admit it and yes polyfill and this was the perfect size you know whatever you have for a normal sized pillow would fit this would fit any kind of sweater pillow and here i am just closing off that open end um this was a little difficult doing it on the sewing machine i should have done it by hand but it worked out and there you have it and i think it looks cool with the little pockets and it's like that song it's got pockets pockets i love it i think it's so cute you can put your remotes in there i just i love it and that's another great addition so another fun idea is to use burlap to create your own stocking and i have my burlap from burlapfabric.com for all your burlap needs yeah and there's a link below and here all i'm doing is using a stocking from my home as a pattern to cut out my burlap. It's very versatile and very fun to use. Now I forgot to say you have to double up when you cut out your pattern so of course you have two sides to your burlap um, stocking and here all I am doing is sewing both sides together and I made sure to leave at the top the two inches open because we're going to flip those over and sew them on the other side so with burlap fabric it's um i don't know which side is the right side but usually you sew the right sides together so the seams are in the inside and here i am finishing off the top and I'm, again as i mentioned before um now oh no this is not the top this is the heel so i'm very careful at turning the heel to make sure that i don't get any wrinkles in my burlap Next, I wanted to create another cottage core inspired stocking. And for this one, I'm going to use some uh, burlap from burlapfabric.com for all your burlap needs. Yes. And all I'm doing is using one of those little cutting boards that you get at the Dollar Tree and cutting it down to fit into the stocking because I'm going to use some stamping techniques and I don't want the paint to bleed to the other side of the stocking. I'm using that wonderful folk art color and it's like an evergreen color. It's absolutely perfect. And I get these from plaid plaid i love to craft forever and i am a plaid ambassador so they are very generous with their products and i'm using iod crockery stamps that i received from a dear friend of mine jackie and i love these stamps i've used them all throughout the year and it just made sense to use it now for my cottage core uh, stocking and as you can see it's very easy to do i'm just painting on the paint to the stamp or using that little plate and just stamping them on, just making sure that I do it nice and even. And it's as easy as that. You can add as many crockery stamps as you want, or you can also embellish it with some stencils. Now I would continue stamping until I filled up my whole stocking. You can do however you'd like. You can also use stencils or um, anything else you want if you want to create your own stencils. But I really love the look of this burlap with all of these crockery stamps all over it. And then once I was done with this, now I have to work on the cuff. And what I did was I turned it inside out and I sewed it so that the edges, as you can see, you can't see the edges on the sides. Now I'm going to embellish it with this perfect uh, fringe that I had in my stash. And it is the absolute exact color 
of the sweater. Can you believe it? I know, incredible. And I, this time I'm just using some plastic that was actually around the roll of this um, trim and I'm putting it under the cuff so that I can just glue it on. I can sew it on, but at that point I was tired. It's very hard to sew sideways. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but it's hard to sew sideways. So I decided to just glue it on to the edge and create my little embellishment for my crockery stamp uh, cottage core stocking. I think it came out great. And I hope you try this at home. It's so, so much fun. And it is a very different look if you haven't had this before in the cottage core in your own Christmas decor. There it is. The good thing about working with a sweater is you have a lot of leftover material that you can use. So here I'm taking a plastic bottle. I'm sure we are gonna all use a plastic bottle around the house that we have before you throw it away. And I'm just going to wrap Joist? Joist. No, just going to wrap the bottle top. I just cut off the bottle top and I'm just going to wrap that with the sweater material. And as you can see, I don't know if you've done this before, if you've seen anybody else do it, but I'm just going to make a cute little winter hat with this um, bottle. And I love the fact that you use this plastic bottle top because number one, you're reusing uh, stuff that would end up in the garbage. But number two, it just keeps its beautiful shape and it's a perfect little um, you know, rustic or cottage core ornament for your Christmas tree. It's inexpensive and it's also lightweight. If you have natural trees, one of the hardest things is finding ornaments that you can actually put on your tree without the, you know, the branches bowing down too low. So this is a perfect uh, example of an item that you can put on your tree that is very easy and light. Now I did put some fur trim at the head and then I created a little fur ball for the top of my little um, a rustic cottage core Christmas hat for my Christmas tree, a little ornament. And I just had so much fun making it and I hope you make it too. And you can make one for each person in your family and even put like any other embellishments. You can put their initials. I just put some uh, evergreen and um, I think it turned out so cute. I, I really love the way this little ornament turned out. So I hope you try this at home. Now, if you are eating those wonderful French uh, yogurts called oui, don't throw away those glass bottles. Let's use them. And here's another color that I'm using again from Folk Art. I'm sorry I did that so quickly, but I think it's called basil. It's a beautiful green color. And again, it combines with my stocking and everything else I have made up until now. So this is going to be some cute little tabletop decor that you can have at home or in your office. Again, since I'm keeping in the theme of cottage core, I'm going to use my crockery stamps and create a label for my little uh, my little wee bottle. And I've been saving those wee bottles not just from myself, but my neighbors, my friends. They bring them over, so it's either I'm going to create some ornaments or I'm going to have a lot of candles to give away to friends, and that's a good thing. I like making candles, and I will make an episode of candle making one day or just gift making how's that so i'm just taking some air dry clay and this is the dav the air dry clay and pressing in making sure to press in really strong that crockery stamp and there you can see as i pull it up our little crockery stamp with all the details and that's going to look so perfect i did have to cut off the top and the bottom just to make sure that it fits here i'm stuffing it with a little bit of styrofoam because I am going to use this for some greenery. But and then on top of that, I decided to put once the the paint had dried and I used I did use it twice. I painted it twice. And the second time I add a little bit of baking soda just to give it a little bit of a rough uh, texture to make it more like a crockery, like crockery. Um, crockery? Yeah, crockery. <laughs> Since uh, I'm using a crockery stamp, I might as well make it look like crockery and uh, very cottage core. Here I'm using that wonderful buffalo check or 
um, gingham, black and white gingham. I think it matches. And again, if you're still into farmhouse, that's fine. You can do it with white and just white and black. I, I added the green. It's a very nice muted green. So I think this goes very well, not just with cottage core, but with farmhouse, if you're gonna have a farmhouse Christmas. Now at the top of this, right on top of the styrofoam, I added a little wood round. I don't know why. I just, I thought it would make it look more rustic. And uh, yeah, just more stable. And then I added my greenery, my evergreens to the top of that wood round that I got. That's from the Dollar Tree from last year. I hope they have it again this year. And then to that, I added some moss. You know how much I love moss. I used some Spanish moss and that's pretty much it. We are done. I think this looks adorable. Again, it could be cute as a tabletop and you can make a whole collection of these wee bottles filled with different types of evergreen leaves that you can get either from the Dollar Tree or any of your other hobby stores. Once again, just want to remind you that this is a Christmas cottage core collaboration hosted by Jackie of Crafting and Mimi's World and joined by Sarah of Jujube DIY. They are both wonderful crafters and have fantastic ideas for cottage core Christmas DIY. So please check out their links below and check out the rest of their channel. Now I bought these wood slices from Hobby Lobby and they are awesome. I love these wood slices. I also thought it would be cool to get some wood slices once they started cutting down natural trees. You know how they always like shave off a little bit at the bottom, but I know that they're very sappy so you'd have to leave them out to dry. But just imagine this with the beautiful pine scent. So here all I'm doing is using the same exact colors I've been using all day today in the folk art paints from plaid i love to craft forever i really enjoy my plaid products and uh, again these are folk art paints and i am using a very simple uh paint technique which is basically uh dab dab it and dab it dab it dab that's all you do is dab and dab and dab and dab and dab and, dab. and just mix the two colors that's what gives it depth and that's what gives it interest um that's basically it that's all i'm doing so this is a great to watch a nice Hallmark movie while you're dabbing your paint and painting your little wood, um, your wood slice. And then all I'm going to do is add a beautiful little gingham um, ribbon, I'm sorry, a gingham, black and white gingham ribbon that I received from N Beads. And there is a link down below as well as a coupon. So you can grab some beautiful N Beads uh, embellishments for your Christmas. If you order now, you'll still get them in time for some Christmas, Christmas crafts. And again, while I was painting, I also added a little bit of snow, a little bit of some red berries here and there, and that is pretty much it. Here's our little wood slice ornament for your cottage core tree. Things I find in my house. Yeah, I found this in my house. I don't know where I got it from probably came from something that I brought home for dinner and there was probably some sauce in, in there and I just like chucked it in the styrofoam without thinking that it wasn't you know something you could throw away that's eh, okay it's it's perfect for cottage core <laughs> like it looks like one of those little milk jugs so I thought oh my gosh this is adorable so what I'm doing is using more more natural elements for this particular ornament I'm basically using some dried leaves that I had as well as these dried flowers or dried baby's breath and again it's just perfect because the leaves match the color of green that I've been using and of course the white just sets it off even better and to top it all off I'm going to use some of that black and white gingham um, I'll wait before I do that I added some red berries just to give a little bit of contrast and then I'm adding the black and white gingham ribbon once again and again i got those little bows from n beads so check out their link down below and there you have it a really fast and simple lovely little cottage core ornament
Okay, can you tell that I love, love, love making ornaments? Yes, here's yet another ornament. And here I'm using some leftover grapevine hearts that I had from uh, Valentine's Day. Yep, yep, I'm using it from Valentine's Day. And all I'm doing is, again, using the same uh, greenery that I've used in the past in, in the projects here. And these, this actually came from Hobby Lobby. I bought it on clearance last year at 90% off. And I'm adding a little bit of... Um, the Spanish moss to make it look kind of like a, like a nest, but not really. And once again, end bead comes to the rescue. Yes, end beads has these wonderful miniature wood cutouts. Are these the not the most adorable things you've ever seen? So I painted these snowflakes white and I'm adding it to my little grapevine heart. And I think it's just making the most darling little cottage core heart for your um, Christmas tree. I hope you try out end beads. They really have wonderful selections. So check out the link below as well as my coupon. Now I found these little frames at the Dollar Tree and usually they use these frames for weddings to put place cards. And I'm just taking it apart and I'm just going to use it for our craft today. It's black and it's perfect because it's I wanted it to have the black background. But they have it in gold and they have it in white. Once again, painting it with that beautiful basil color from our basil. No, basil is the name of a person, but basil <laughs> is the herb that this looks like. And now I'm doing a little bit of whitewash on top of it as well. Just to give it again some dimension, some highlighting. And I just, I love the way the color is turning out. It's absolutely perfect for my cottage core look. And now all I'm going to do is embellish this little frame. And it's it's so simple and easy. Now you can put a picture in the frame if you like. I liked having this like open uh, frame kind of look. It's very country, very cottage core. So I thought this was perfect for my little Christmas tree as well. And last but not least, we're going to add a few pine cones to finish this off perfectly. Now to tie it in all together with the other decorations that I already made, of course, we're going to add some black and white gingham because I, I really do like the black and white gingham. It's so cute. And again, perfect to tie this to your Christmas tree. And there you have it. And it also makes a beautiful tag for any kind of gifts. Thank you again for joining me today and thank you to Jackie and to Sarah for joining me in this Cottagecore collaboration. Please like, share and subscribe and come back for some more Christmas magic. And as always, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you and remember to live the adventure. See you again soon.